Hello Antichrist Magazine. I am one third of the design abstract. We all have very, very uh, complicated schedules. So just I representing the entire band and speaking for them. So you may know we've done this before. Um, so the answer hasn't really changed. Uh, the meaning behind the band name is that it used to be a solo project under the name Design, and then when we got a full band, um, we, or I, decided to give it a full name because it was literally impossible to Google Design Band and whatever. We still get hits every day on the Bandcamp, uh, searching for Bandcamp Design because that's still what the Bandcamp is. Fun fact. So, Metamtechnosis is our sequel to Technotheism. Um, it continues the storyline more or less where Technotheism left off, though uh, it leaves a good chunk of time in between, just for narrative purposes. If you haven't listened to Technotheism, um, or you're not super aware of the story, I would say check that out first, uh, so that I don't spoil anything because we're that kind of band. So, lyrics on Metamtechnosis, kind of just talked about. Um, it's more of the same if you like sort of conceptual sci-fi melodic death metal. Uh, it's very narrative driven, very conceptual, and deals with a science fiction mega future where there's cool AIs and nanobots and that sort of thing. Um, the lyrics can also be interpreted more vaguely and more, I guess, personably, emotionally. Um, it's not just like it's reading a sci-fi book, um, but, you know, if you're interested in the story behind it, that is there. Um, we have, you know, sort of more generic sounding choruses, uh, like Aberration Omega, They Might Never Know Until It's Too Late, We Are Only Getting Stronger Each Day. It's not inherently sci-fi, it's just kind of a metalcore chorus, but it works with the plot. So the album art for this one was done by a Japanese dude who I'm probably going to butcher his name, uh, Yuda Shimpo. Um, we love his artwork. He did an excellent job with Metamtechnosis, um, especially if you knew the references he was given, which is like Matrixy, Halo-y type stuff. Um, it was not at all what I would have come up with, especially the like neon sort of greeny cyan look of the text. Like that was all him. I would that's way outside of my comfort zone, but. It turned out super cool. We've already got a lot of compliments on it and it isn't even out yet. Uh, hopefully the pattern has been established that we have excellent album art. Um, and we don't go to like traditional album art people either. It's always just a digital artist who does commissions and then we turn it into an album art. In his case, I think he's done a handful, um, maybe. Uh, but most of what he does is just pure sort of digital art. Ah, yes, okay, obligatory abstract of records joke. Um, so, we were kind of a little uh, coy about it last time. If you've watched the last video, I'm assuming you have. Um, it's required homework. Basically, uh, Logan and I and a couple friends we sort of started and run Abstractor Records, and it's a whole group of bands that just kind of slam out releases like nobody's business. Um, especially during COVID times, that really picked up. Uh, we have a handful of bands that we can kind of consider under the Abstractor Records label to varying degrees of association with Design Abstract. We don't do, like, 
distribution and that sort of things. Like we've had a few inquiries about that and I understand why. Abstractor Records is basically a recording studio. It's, if you can see the other side of this room, it's this recording studio. We do everything in house as far as recording, uh, a lot of the videos, a lot of the graphic design except for album art, um, all that crap we do here. So Abstractor Records is more of a studio. You can come here to record and we'll help you out. But we're not gonna like print a thousand copies of your record from a band that we've never met because that's not what we do. The physical releases that we do produce, that's paid for by the band. Um, I doubt anybody who's emailed us is watching this, but just in case, just so you know, that's why I didn't respond. I'm sorry, it's on the list. Well, I don't think we can say too much about that, um, but what we've always said is that if a label, a real label, can offer us something that we can't do ourselves, then we are definitely open to it. I will say we are kind of currently talking to a label. Um, don't really know much else, but we are definitely open to it. I don't think it's make or break. We are pretty self-sufficient. We've done a good chunk of stuff ourselves uh, but if there is places where a label can fill in then definitely take advantage of that as long as they aren't going to take advantage of you uh so we don't play shows though there's been talk of maybe thinking about playing shows uh COVID-19 basically just meant that we could be as productive as possible while, well, you know, meeting the regulations. When there was like a hard lockdown, it was just remote or nothing. Uh, but for me personally, when my employment opportunities ended, you know, in real life world, uh, I had tons of time, so I just started slamming out releases. Um, but as far as shows, not really, though maybe in the future. I don't want to talk about this because I don't want people to look this up. Early on, we did play a live show. One live show. The entire performance was an epic fail. I believe the footage is still up. I wish it wasn't. Uh, it was not a tight show. There were too many members in the band. Uh, would not recommend. But yeah, if you want some blackmail, sure, try to find it. I'm not one to talk to about new music because I kind of just listen to the same shit pretty constantly. Uh, I've been getting into soil work. I never listened to them before. It would be really embarrassing if I said that the last video, I can't remember. Um, the new Cognizance record, uh, Upheaval, I liked it. That was good. Um, big fan of them. They seem to not be able to put out a bad album, which is nice. Uh, I thought the new Poppy record was pretty great. I love that opening track. Um, it's pretty good. That may be the only 2021 released music I've heard. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm terrible. I feel like at this point, the how is COVID gonna affect the music scene? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm sure it's been talked to death at this point. Design Abstract can't really speak to that too much as far as scenes go. Um, we are, we're we're pretty isolated and we're pretty not affected by the local scene. Again, that may change, but for the time being, like, you know, we sort of met online to create a specific genre. It's not really a product of where we are. Um, and in fact, we don't even tell people where we're really from because it's not really relevant um, like where this actual studio is located you've, you've never heard of it it basically doesn't exist ah okay so relating to that no I cannot um, I know maybe a handful of people in the Ontario scene and a lot of people seem to be at least for me personally I'm not speaking about the you know Logan and Matt here, um, just from my experience, I've got enough people who have kind of been turned off by my complete indifference to playing shows 
that there's a lot of people I think who are unimpressed with my attitude. Um, and those people are probably equal to the people that I actually do know. I personally know nothing about the Ontario metal scene. Uh, I think that there's a handful of symphonic-ish metal bands. Um, most of them I've never met. Maybe I will someday if we play shows. Um, but like I've said, our music is not really a product of the scene. And Matt is the only one who's like somewhat outgoing of a human being. Like, you know, he's, he's very outgoing compared to me and Logan. Um, I can't answer for him, but I can answer for me and maybe half for Logan based on what we've talked about. Um, really wish they were here, but uh, schedules are tough. Future plans for Design Abstract. Technotheism is a trilogy. Don't think that's a spoiler to say. We're already working on the third album, which will conclude the trilogy. Metatechnosis is the middle one. Uh, big plans for the last one. Pretty excited about it. Um, other than that, mentioned that we're thinking about playing shows. It's sort of in the works. We're going to see how we're feeling about it. Um, so that's new, uh, but mostly just, just making music, that's just what we do. Um, hope you like Madame Technosis, hope you liked Technotheism, um, even if you didn't like Technotheism, you should check out Madame Technosis, it's got much better production if I do say so myself, a lot more melodic, uh, Matt really brought a lot to the table with the writing, um, and making the songs understandable to, like, normal people, is how I'll say that. So yeah, definitely check it out, and thanks for watching.